Well, complexity um, really is a conglomerate of a lot of different theories. It's really kind of an umbrella framework, and it sort of ranges from ma complex mathematical formulas to computer simulations to relationships and social network theory to looking at um, system dynamics and nested systems and a systems loop. And so I sort of evolved into complexity theory. I, first of all, was very much interested in Peter Senge's work about learning organizations. And um, when I started studying about learning organizations, I became very interested in systems systems thinking and the kinds of causal loops that happen with watching behavior over time in a system. And that really kind of led me to believe that those kinds of principles and practices could really be applied to clinical reasoning and reasoning about how nursing care problems that patients have might be related one to another and uh, really beginning to understand the patient as a complex system in relationship to having multiple nursing care needs with a particular situation. So for example, if you have a knee replacement, um, you're dealing with issues of pain and fatigue and immobility and uh, anxiety and maybe body image and maybe risk for infection. So m I was very much interested in trying to help people figure out in terms of nursing practice how all of those how all of those diagnoses relate to each one and the other. And uh, systems thinking and complexity thinking sort of has informed my thinking in regards to the clinical reasoning that's involved with patients with multiple complex uh, issues. And so I've sort of evolved over time a model of clinical reasoning called the outcome present state test model. Begin with the end in mind, look at outcomes, figure out where your present state is, and the gap between where you are and where you want to be creates a test that you have to fill. But we only do that after you begin to think about the complexity and the, the relationships between and among these nursing diagnoses that these patients have. And something very interesting happens when you start asking students or clinicians to think about how all of the diagnoses are related to one another. For example, what is the relationship to anxiety and pain and self-care? and you get people to give voice to those relationships, but you also have them map them out. And um, Albert Bear Bassey has done a lot of work on networks and, and social network theory, especially as it relates to the internet. And he said something very interesting happens when you bring two ideas together and then you start an iteration with another idea. And he says what happens is the entire system goes through a phase shift and it morphs into something else. So um, in relationship to clinical reasoning about a lot of different patient problems all at once, if you consider the whole system dynamic of a patient and you ask students or clinicians to relate things and develop what I call a clinical reasoning web, which becomes a visual representation of the complexity of the dynamics between and among all the nursing diagnoses, it's very interesting as people begin to explain that in their mind, one of those diagnoses attracts most all of the arrows and the explanatory point. And so we call that the keystone issue. And it really does become an attractor then. And if you fix that diagnosis, you can influence the resolution of all the other diagnoses.